Well, a question that you probably asked your spouse or your spouse asked you. A question that we ask every day, or we are asked, probably. I asked my wife this morning, I thought about it. I was looking over my paper stuff and walked out this morning. I said, are you ready? <laughs> you ever ask your wife that? <laughs> your wife ever asked you that? You, well, not you all, but anyway. You ever ask your friend that? <laughs> you know, your friend, you, you ask it all the time. Are you ready or not? You're, I'm waiting on you. Are you ready? But, you know, we ask them words and wonder, meaning, are you prepared? Have you got your keys, your hat, your coat, whatever, your purse, whatever you want to take along? <laughs> but, that, you know, things we need to go where we're going. We need to be prepared for it. You know, if you're going outside and it's cold, you need your coat. If you're going outside and it's sunny, you need your hat. If you're like me, you sunburn your head, like I did the other day. But, you know, yesterday... We had a funeral. Had a fellow up here in the box. He's my brother-in-law. He was ready. Are you ready? Do you ever think about that? You know, we go through life and we don't think much about it. The other last week, he went to work one day. And he figured on coming home that evening, doing whatever. He'd welded, built him some ramps for his trailer the night before. Wanted to put them on, put the pins in them and all that. Had these big plans. Well, he come home, come home, went home that day, but not to, to the home up here. Went somewhere else. You know, somebody told me two days in a row at the viewing and at the funeral, this is an eye-opener for me. Not the same person, two different people. So this is an eye opener for me. You know, tomorrow is not promised. And tomorrow is not promised. You know, even if you're really young like me and people there, or <laughs> if you're really elderly, it don't matter if you're 16 or 61 or 19 or 91. One of these days, you're going to be up here in front of the church. That's what my dad always told my uncle. Well, I ain't never going to church. He said, one of these days you'll be there. He said, they may have to push you in. They ain't pushing me to church. He said, you ain't got nothing to say about it. <laughs> Meaning he'd be in the coffin. They'd push him in the church and take him up front. But, you know, are we ready for that? We get prepared for everything. And we say, me and the wife does this a lot. Have you got this? Have you got that? This morning. Have you got the tripod? Where's it at? <laughs> oh, I see it. It's in the car. Have you got this? Have you got that? We get through life getting prepared to go someplace. Being ready means that we're prepared. We've got all we need. Well, I'll tell you in this life, being prepared, the biggest question, have you got, is have you got saved? Have you given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the biggest question. And it don't, I don't mean partially. I mean fully. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? And by doing that, instead of asking about our keys or a wallet or a hat, you know, you should ask, do you have a relationship? Do you have faith? Do you have hope? Do you have salvation? But do we do that? We go through life preparing ourselves for everything but them. I have noticed. And I have done that a lot myself. You know, you prepare yourself for everything but them. When you're like these youngs here, you don't think you're ever going to get old enough to die. When you get to about 50, you start thinking about it. When you get to about 60, you really think about it. And in today's world, you never know. But... You know, the person I was talking about didn't have health problems. They were good to go. You know, things in life happen. <coughs> things in life happen. Hebrews says there's allotted to every man a time to die. And that will happen. 
But what do we try to do in our life? Do I say about preparation? Do we make preparations for our death and our transition from here to heaven or to be with the Lord? Or do we make preparations for something else? Most of us don't. I didn't for years. I worried about a new truck, a new house, getting money in the bank, having something that people would look up to me in the community and say, hey, he's got that, he's got that. What does that do for you? To God, you're still just that person. It don't matter what you got, what you don't. You know, I was reading this week about reading things for scriptures for the funeral. Uh, was you reading this year, if you turn to Matthew chapter 6, start with verse 19. This is Jesus speaking. Excuse me. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. It says, Lay not up yourself treasures on earth. You all probably read this many times, but take it to heart today. Lay up for yourself not treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt, but where, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, for neither moth nor rust do corrupt, nor the thief will steal. Verse 21 tells the story. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What means the most to you in your life, in the world? What means the most? The things here on earth, which are temporary, or the things in heaven, which is going to be forever? You know, what do we push the most stock in? You, we usually put the most, most money, the most effort, the most emphasis on the things of the earth. I did it for years. There's things on earth we need, yeah. There's things we got to have. But there's things on, that, that we can do without and build more heavenly treasures working for God. You know, there's things we can quit doing and start doing something else working for God. Guarantee you, you can think of something. But it says, the light of the body is the eye, and if therefore that eye be single, or clear, the whole body shall be full of light. But if the eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness. No man can serve two masters. And I said, what do we, what do we serve? For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or money. You know, does money control your life? Think about it. Didn't mind for a long time. Oh, I had to go to work. I got to work. I got to work overtime. I got to work overtime. I got to get this. I got to buy that. Y'all going to get into that one day. But anyway, don't, don't put things in your life to lay treasures up on earth and forsake your family, God, and Jesus Christ. And your Christian brothers and sisters. Don't do that. You know, I did it for years. A lot of people do that. They're not saying, and Jesus talks all down here about it. You know, not saying that you can't have money. It's what you do with it that counts. It says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life about what you shall eat or drink. You know, what you put on your body. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? You know, we worry so much about what we wear, how we look. Some people do as anyway. Gene says I don't. But, uh, we put so much emphasis on that and so much time and trouble into that. God still sees us as we are. A man told me yesterday, he was right up here. He was to help preach funeral. He was wearing a suit and tie, and I looked kind of like this. But he said, Roger, he says, not the clothes that makes a person. 
And it's not. God talks about that. They fuss at me about playing with pen and that just fell apart. But, uh, I got more. But. <laughs> no, God says that outward appearance of men, people judge people by outward appearance of people. The outward appearance is not what makes the person. The outward appearance is nothing compared to what's in the heart. That is a person. You know, you can work and work and work all your lives and live to be 99.9 .9 years old and be the most pretty girl, boy, woman, man, child in the world, whatever. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're not ready. You be ready at all times. But to get ready, we got to get our heart to know God. We got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, that's, and I told it yesterday at the funeral. It's really bad to try to preach a funeral for someone that you don't know if they're saved or not. You don't know if they have a relationship with Jesus Christ or not. Because I'll guarantee you, I can't preach you into heaven, or nor can any other minister. That's between you and God. You know, all the all the things that you do here on this earth, what I'm trying to say about the treasures is, is what's the most important to you. There's one scripture in the Bible that's misinterpreted a lot that says, if you don't love me, Jesus saying, if you don't love me more than your father, mother, sister, brother, or children, that you can't inherit the kingdom of God. Which is, you know, it's misinterpreted a lot, but meaning that you can't love them, no. I mean, you put Jesus Christ first in your life at all times. And he'll take care of the rest. If you go back to uh, Luke chapter 18, just a few more books all over, it's more or less the same thing. But <coughs> <coughs> Jesus tell them, tell them things just the way they are. But what I was saying about being ready, there's people in the world that think they're ready and people in the world that act like they're ready and they're not. They think because of who they are, what name they got, what status in the community, county, country, or whatever, that they're saved. That don't make you saved. Like I said, your relationship with Jesus Christ makes you saved. There's a story in Luke chapter 18 about two men that went into the temple to pray. It says two men, Luke chapter 18, verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Now first of all, you got to know who these two people were. One was a Pharisee. He was one of them people that I was talking about said was looked, acted like, had the status in the community or city or town that he was one of them law-abiding good people, good Christian people. Made everybody believe he was. Jesus might have had a little different take on that. The publican was just a mere person. Said the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. This was his prayer. He said, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. In other words, who he was and what he gave he thought made him that ready person, ready for Jesus Christ. But what did the publican do? And the publican, standing afar off, would not even as much as lift up his eyes into heaven, but smote his breast, put his hand on his chest, and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what it takes. We talked about that in Sunday school class. When the first thing that you've got to do if you've not given your life to the Lord is recognize the fact that you have not. 
and repent of your sin. Get right with Jesus Christ. You know, it says, we were reading in Romans this morning, you know, it says, if you repent and you call upon the name of the Lord and confess your sin, that you will be saved. Pretty simple. I could have passed that test in school. You know. But did I pass it? Do I have enough sense to pass it in life? Not for 30 years it didn't. Too many other things in the way. That's what I was talking about. That's right. Too many other things get in our lives and get between us and Jesus Christ. And they're called sin. Anything that takes us away from Jesus Christ is a sin. Don't seem like it, but it is. The world sure don't call them that. They call them uh, luxuries, enjoyment, necessities. But God don't call them things necessities. I will tell you that. But Jesus goes on to tell about this. He says, <laughs> Jesus says, I tell you, this man, the one that said, be merciful to me, a sinner, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. You know, think about that. Do we go through life trying to be something we're not? Making people believe we're ready? You know, why did you come to church today? I ask people that a lot of times. And people look at I see a lot of funny looks when I ask that question. Why did you come to church today? Well, you're supposed to. Yeah, you're supposed to. But why did you come to church today? Did you come to church because you wanted to? Come to church because you wanted to hear the Word of God? You know, in ministry training, they told us there was all kinds of reasons people need, that people came to church. They gave us a little book just on why people come to church. And it has lots of things. It's got lists in there. Some of them is to see what the other person's wearing that they don't like. And so they can go home and call whoever and tell them about it. Sometimes they come just to see if the other person is there. Because if they ain't, they need to call them and tell them they need to get to church. Some of them call them to church because they know that somebody else lives close to there. And they'll see that they don't and think they're a bad person. You know, it's, there's all kinds of reasons people go to church. But why did you come to church? Did you come to church to hear the word of God? And because you wanted, you was interested to have a relationship with Jesus Christ? That's why you need to come to church. But if you go on over to verse 18 in chapter 18, there's a story there about a feller that thought he was a good guy. That's what we've been talking about. He thought he was ready. But Jesus came around and he thought he would go and ask him. Verse 18, he walked up to Jesus and he said, well, verse 18 says, And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? That's what I'm talking about. What do we need to do to inherit eternal life? What do we need to do to be ready to have eternal life? And Jesus told him, First of all, why callest thou me good? There's no one good except save one, and that is God. In other words, Jesus said, I'm not God. Don't call me good. And then he told him <coughs> what he already knew, probably. Verse 20, he said, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not kill, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. You know what the guy said? He said, all these things I did from the time I was young, from my youth. Now Jesus, when he heard him, told him, he said, you like one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute it unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. How do you think I worked out for this stuff? Well, Jesus was Jesus. Jesus knew, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus knew this guy. And he knew what he had. Just like he knows me and you. He knew what was most important to him. What is most important to you? 
Because 23 says, he told him, sell ahead and come follow him. He said, when he heard this, <coughs> he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was sorrowful, he said, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Thought it'd get better, but I ain't get better. <coughs> anyway, Jesus told him, he told the disciples, says, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. Which is a lot of debate about that. No words, it's not possible. But if you turn over to the other page in your Bible, the main thing. <coughs> that we need to remember in verse 27 it says these things which are impossible with men are possible with God it don't matter a lot of people say that they can't be ready because they're too bad of a person they have sinned too much in their life that they can't they can't be ready. I'll never get to heaven. That's not true. You know, think about the people in the Bible. There's a lot of people in there that were not always good people. But with God, when you get down on your knees, when you accept Jesus Christ into your life and mean it and repent of your sins and ask forgiveness and ask Jesus to come into your life, all that stuff, it says, is forgiven and also forgotten. Taken away as far as the east is from the west. It don't matter. Because anything that... Things which are impossible with men <coughs> are possible with God. But remember that in this week to come. Just think about that. If you go about and do what you're going to do, get up in the morning, go do what you do, what your plans is. Most of us have plans for tomorrow, some of them. Think about if you don't come home. Think if God's going to take you tomorrow. Are you ready or are you not? Just think about that today. <coughs> We're going to have communion. If anybody wants to stay and have communion, you're welcome to.